Okay, great. Uh, sorry. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see so many um, colleagues and friends on the call. Uh, so I'm going to talk about serologic markers for cholera. And I know there's been some background um, already discussed and many experts in the audience, but I'll just do a little bit of uh, more uh, background discussion to start. Uh, so um, as, as we've heard, there are two primary uh, antigens or targets of the antibody response in cholera. One is, can you see my arrow, by the way? Yes, we can. Okay, good. So one is the cholera toxin, and the other is the O polysaccharide, that our o, our o antigen that coats the outer surface of the bacteria. When one thinks of antibodies, one thinks of the target, but also the function and structure of the antibody, so the different isotypes, the primary isotypes that target cholera toxin are IgG and IgA, while IgG, IgA, and IgM all target the O polysaccharide antigen. Uh, and antibodies that target cholera toxin function by blocking the target's um, uh, binding to receptors and activation of adenylate cyclase in the cells, whereas uh, antibodies that target the O polysaccharide probably function to block colonization as uh, Dr. Sack uh, had mentioned and is shown in this figure. Uh, when th one thinks about the uses of different antibodies, um, they can be uh, help us understand the relationship between the host and pathogen in the infection, but also serve as very practical markers of either vaccination uh, or infection uh, or protection. And these uh, markers may overlap uh, so you could have a marker that you see after infection and vaccination that is also associated with protection, or uh, they could be individual. They, they may not overlap as shown in this Venn diagram. So we've heard about the vibriocidal assay. This is probably the best accepted uh, um, predictor of recent infection, even to the point where it's used as a diagnostic test in some sort of rare circumstances. Um, work by uh, Andrew Asman and uh, Daniel Leung and colleagues showed that this was probably the best tool to, for seroepidemiology um, in combination with other uh, markers like the cholera toxin response. Um, it is also the most utilized correlate of protection following uh, vaccination. Uh, so it's, that's been shown in both challenge studies and human volunteers. Uh, as well as in household contacts of uh, patients with cholera, those with pre-existing vibriocidal antibodies have a lower likelihood of uh, becoming infected. And as a result, this marker is used in some bridging studies of uh, cholera vaccines, as you, all, as you all know and have talked about. Um, however, uh, we know this is not an absolute marker. We, we don't think it's a mechanistic marker since we don't think uh, complement activity at the mucosal surface is what really protects against colonization with cholera. So uh, with that background, I just wanna very briefly describe some work in progress that's part of a team effort with uh, many, many uh, partners, many of which are on this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so we are trying to really conduct a systematic analysis of what antibodies um, are associated with uh, protection against infection and with past exposure to either cholera or cholera vaccination. Um, and our objective in this work is to compare multiple targets, multiple isotypes and structures of the antibody and multiple functions of the antibody. So we've expanded the list of the traditional antigenic targets to include some of the pro virulence proteins that Dr. Sack was mentioning, hem hemolysin, sialidase, the toxin co-regulated pilus, uh, we're looking at all the different isotypes um, and we're looking at expanded functional profiles as well. So not only vibriocidal activity, but um, complement binding and deposition, uh, phagocytosis. And we're also trying to use higher throughput technologies, technologies that allow you to test multiple antigens and functions simultaneously with very low amounts of um, blood uh, required. Um, and these are also, so one of the main technologies we're looking at is multiplex bead assays or luminex um, assays is the main commercial um, 
um, maker of this. Um, these, um, these can allow you to do serosurveillance or serologic testing with very small amounts of blood and many, many antigens simultaneously so they can be integrated into other uh, serosurveillance programs. Um, and so I'll talk about two applications of this sort of systems, systematic approach to serology, looking at um, past infection, uh, uh, antibodies as marker of past infection and antibodies as correlates of protection in both the um, challenge model and household contact model. Um, and this is just to illustrate what some of these results might look like. Uh, what you see on this graph are responses to different antigens, the B subunit of the toxin, the holotoxin, the Inaba polysaccharide, the Ogawa O polysaccharide, Cialdase TCP, and the hemolysin. Uh, these are different isotypes, IgG, IgA, and IgM. And these are responses in a, in a cohort of patients uh, who have recovered from cholera in, in DACA. Uh, and you can see each of these antibodies, there's a, a response, so an increase after infection. Uh, each of the individual lines is an individual uh, recovered patient, whereas the black line is the aggregate. Uh, and you can see that these all have sort of different kinetics and different characteristics. Um, and when you use this data to develop a model using computational methods um, uh, to say how well do these antibodies predict recent infection, uh, they actually predict that somewhat well. Um, so this, is, uh, this graph here shows the area under the curve, the sort of predictive capacity of these models. Um, and each of these um, uh, columns um, reflects a different set of markers. So this first uh, uh, column here, or the first set of um, AUCs is vibriocidal and traditional ELISA markers. And I'll draw your attention to this third uh, group, which is the multiplex bead uh, markers um, using all the antigens that I had just um, illustrated and all the different isotypes. So what you can see is that uh, if you look at vibriocidal and ELISA, um, and this is a different, different time window, so 60 days, 120 days, uh, 200 and 300. If you look 60 days after infection using vibriocidal and ELISA, you can predict pretty well. I mean, one would be perfect, uh, so it's not perfect, um, but uh, you can predict relatively accurately who was infected and who wasn't just looking at their serologic responses, and that's a useful tool for serosurveys. But using this high throughput platform, of the multiplex uh, bead assay, you also predict very well. And in fact, you predict a little bit better at these later time windows of 120 and 200 and 300 days compared to the vibriocidal and the ELISA, the traditional markers. Uh, we have also um, uh, looked at this, as I mentioned, to predict protection in people who've been exposed to uh, toxigenic vibrio cholera. Um, this is um, looking at a set of functional and antibody markers as correlates of protection in household contacts of those uh, with pa the patients with cholera in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And what you can see here is um, this is sort of all our biomarkers combined, all the multiplex bead um, uh, assays, vibriocidal, other functional assays uh, like phagocytosis and complement deposition. And even when you incorporate all these um, antibodies into a model, I mean, you can predict somewhat who will be infected with Vibrio cholera, but your area under the curve is, is not great. I mean, you'd like to see the curve go like this. Um, it go, instead, um, you know, it's, it's better prediction than chance, but it's not perfect. And maybe that's because not all household contacts are equally exposed to, to cholera. I think what surprised us a little bit was when we looked in the human challenge model, uh, this is using um, uh, samples from a cohort of individuals who were vaccinated with uh, um, the Vaxcora, the CBD-103 vaccine, and then challenged with N16961, is you don't predict that well who gets infected using these immune markers either. Uh, so again, uh, even using all our combination of markers, 
we still have sort of a limited ability to predict following vaccination who's going to be protected or not. And I think that just shows that we are we are still not there in our quest to really develop ideal correlates of protection for cholera vaccination. But I do think this sort of systematic approach to comparing different antigens and antibodies does shed a little bit of light on the situation and is a, probably a, a good methodology by which to evaluate new markers of uh, protection following vaccination. And so uh, with that, I'll end. Hopefully I was somewhat close on the time. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is really a large collaborative uh, team with uh, um, uh, collaborators in uh, Dr. Kadri and a group at ICDDRB, Zami La Sante in uh, Haiti, and uh, many folks at Mass General, and uh, Andrew Asman and his, his team, uh, particularly Forrest Jones and Kirsten Weens, who did a lot of this analysis.